I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. <clears throat> Today you have a choice. You have a choice to choose between health care and you have a choice to choose between sick care. What's the difference between health care and what's the difference between sick care? If you choose sick care, you choose, you choose basically a system where you keep medicating yourself, never changing your lifestyle, not changing the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you move, the way you think, and that's why you stay sick. Or you can choose health care where, yes, you listen to your doctors, you take the medication that they give you, you take the treatment that's prescribed to you, but you also change your lifestyle. So over time, the symptom that you went to, to your doctor with, it starts getting better and better and your doctor can slowly wean you off that medication if possible because you changed your lifestyle and you address the root cause of the problem or your sickness. So you have that choice today, sick care or health care. Okay, we all choose to start crying when people die around us, loved ones die of diseases and all of that stuff. And yes, it is sad. I'm not taking away from that. But do we learn our lessons from most of the deaths which happened way too early, which were within our control? Poor lifestyle, over medication, not changing the amount of stress that we have in our life because we choose not to, sleep deprivation, lack of exercise, sedentary lifestyles, junk food and processed food that causes disease in our children, juvenile diabetes. And then we just sit back and cry when we lose control over human health without, without introspecting to see what we failed to do. It doesn't have to be too late. Every single day that we're alive is a gift from God, is a gift to ourselves saying that it is possible to make change. Now we can take that day for granted and continue with our miserable lives of abusing our body and all of that stuff. Or we can decide to make small little changes, not extreme, enjoy life. Enjoy your desserts, enjoy a little bit of sugar, enjoy going out and socializing, doing everything in balance without abusing the human body. And that is healthcare. That is how you're gonna look after and respect your body. What you disrespect is taken away from you. You disrespect money, you lose it. You disrespect people in relationships, you lose it. You disrespect anything, including your, including your health, and you lose it. What I'm talking about today is your gut health. Everyone knows, oh, gut health. Everyone talks about it in society like it's the latest fad. But how many people are doing something about it? Okay, especially when medical science today shows us the link between poor gut health and obesity, the link between poor gut health and diabetes, between poor gut health and cancer, low immunity, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cognitive brain disorders, poor hair quality, poor skin quality, high triglycerides, high inflammatory levels like CRP in the human body, thyroid issues, endocrine issues, all linked with poor gut health. Yet. We're looking for the next superfood. We're looking for the next nutraceutical, the next vitamin, the next supplement, the next fad program. We're waiting for Google to throw that option to us so we can try yet another program that's gonna fail for us. But all we need to do is step back and start building our own gut health. It isn't rocket science. Of course, if you are currently in a position where your gut health is really messed up, you may need help and professional guidance, but if not, you can start making that change today, right now, today, because your gut is your second brain. It is called the enteric nervous system, the ENS. It is constantly corresponding with your main brain, which is why you, have, you, have something, you, you get nervous, you feel it in your gut. You get anxious, you feel it in your gut. 100% of the IBS cases are caused because of anxiety, stress, and chronic worry, 100%. That's why there's no medicine. There is no medicine that can fix it. At the most, your doctor is going to put you on an anti-depressant uh, or an anti-anxiety drug and stuff like that because they do know that anxiety causes most IBS. So again, how do we build great gut health in the simplest way? I'm going to drop simple lifestyle tips and simple foods that you can do right away. But like I said, if you have severe gut problems already, some of these foods may actually be worse for you. So make sure that you're taking professional guidance. The second thing you need to understand about your gut, everyone's gut is different. Everyone's gut is unique. What suits you doesn't have to suit someone else, but here are some of the changes that we can make. Number one, your diet has to be diverse. Diversity, why? Because your gut has diversity. 
trillions of different strains of bacteria, which is why when your plate looks like a rainbow, it's got a little bit of green, a little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown, whatever it is. More color means more diversity, which means more food for your gut. If you have trillions of different kinds of bacteria that are supporting human life, they need different nutrients. Just having the same kind of food all the time, which is not diverse, may not be sufficient for your gut, which is why we say the first rule is make your plate look like a rainbow. It's as simple as that, whether it's beetroot, carrot, cucumber, purple cabbage, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be fancy. It needs to be simple because if your gut has a diverse population of gut bacteria, your food has to be diverse as well. Different foods for different reasons. So it's as simple as that. Keep a diverse, colorful plate. That's the best way. That's the first rule to start with your gut health. Number two, if you are struggling with gut problems, which one in two Indians suffer from, you know you have a gut problem if you're suffering from chronic acidity, okay, too much stomach acid or too little stomach acid. If you have H. pylori, if you have ulcers, if you have bloating, if you have a little bit of bloating here and there is absolutely fine. Sometimes you just overeaten or you ate too much of sugar, that's fine. The bloat disappears. But if the bloat is continuous, you have severe issues with your gut, you need to take care of it. If you have several loose motions in a day, if you have constipation, if you are passing one day without passing a motion, you have severe gut issues and you need to address it before it becomes a disease in the human body. Sugar, stop sugar. If you have too much of gut, problems stop white sugar because there is bad bacteria that thrives on carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates and sugar. So the more refined carbohydrates and the more refined sugar you feed yourself, you are feeding the bad bacteria, which is now growing at a faster pace than the good bacteria. The bad bacteria actually grows and it starts poking holes in your intestinal wall, now allowing certain toxic particles to enter your blood, which should never be there because you've created those holes with your gut bacteria. Now, what do you have an autoimmune condition? Your TPO can go up, your ATGs can go up, you can have lupus, vitiligo, multiple sclerosis, you can have a Hashimoto's thyroid, you can have all eczema, psoriasis, and all of these issues because of poor gut bacteria, simple. As simple as that. So you need to cut down with sugar, you need to stop sugar, you need to balance it. Okay, I'm not talking about fruit sugar, unless you are what is one, one of those people who has like five, five pieces of fruit or five whole fruits at one time. You see, you see, there are people who have a platter of fruit this size in the morning. You are overdoing it on fructose, creating gut, gut problems as well. There is something called fructose malabsorption that is also caused in people who have too many fruits. So you see, everything in life has to be in balance. Okay, just because something is good doesn't mean you start having more and more of it. More fruits doesn't mean more health. More nuts doesn't mean better health. Okay, more biotin doesn't mean stronger and longer hair. So we need to understand less is more quality and quantity is extremely important. So be careful of white sugar. What should your diet contain? A variety of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, lentils, and lean protein. Everything that we've been eating for years, a balanced diet. But yet we choose extremes to lose weight. We lose weight. But we have severe gut issues. I can't tell you we, if I put a number to it. We have thousands of people who have lost weight and they come to us with the most severe gut issues, the most severe acid reflux, the most severe bloating because they lost weight the wrong way. And they're, no ha they're, not, they're not happy right now. Imagine losing weight but having a new issue of gut problems, not being able to sleep at night because you have acid reflux because you lost weight the wrong way through extreme fad diets. There are loads of people today intermittent fasting on coffee, black coffee. And before science shows them that they are destroying their bodies, destroying their lower esophageal sphincter. Okay, and all of that stuff, you know, you have to understand there are thousands and millions of people who are having balanced diets and balanced lifestyles with great bodies, great weight, maintaining it and psychologically happy. Why do you choose extremes? Why do you need an extreme diet when there is enough of proof around the world that balance works for everyone? So the more extreme diets you do, the more you deprive your gut out of key elements, which you will never find in a nutraceutical or a pill. Okay, a nutraceutical, a pill or a supplement may be great. I'm not against them. They are necessary for necessary reasons but they can never replace real food. We need to understand that. Now, of course, there are a lot of powders that can replace pesticide-laden food, but your supplements that you think you're popping can never replace real food. So a balanced diet. Who said whole grains are bad? 
Who said whole grains are bad? Whole grains are loaded with vitamins and minerals and you'll have people saying that the cavemen never ate it and agriculture came 10,000 years later and all of that crap. My question to you is what about millions of people who are having whole grains, have zero health problems, have zero weight problems, are happy and their lives are just perfect? Ask yourself those questions before you jump onto extremes. If you enjoy the extreme, it's working for you, your health is intact, please go ahead with it. But it doesn't have to be everyone's way of life. Your gut requires nutrition from whole grains, vegetables, fruits, lean protein, nuts, seeds, legumes, and lentils. Now, a lot of people say, Luke, I can't have rajma, I can't have chana, I can't have dal. These are bad for my gut. No, your gut is too weak to handle it. Don't blame the food. If you can't break it down, that means you have inflammation in your gut and your body's trying to tell you, fix your gut because you should be able to break down those foods. Now, some people, some people may be allergic to it. Some people may be allergic to lectins, which are found in dals and legumes and all of that stuff. That's a small population of people. But everyone else, they just go through these diet fats, cutting out every food. What are you going to eat at the end of the day? You've not addressed the root cause of your problem, which is possibly just inflammation in the gut and you need to take care of that. So balanced diet, resistant starch. Resistant starch is fabulous for your gut because it helps you to repopulate bacteria in your gut as well as it repairs your intestinal walls of the large colon, which is extremely important for your overall gut health. We find that in green bananas or green banana flour. In potatoes, which are boiled and then cooled, completely cooled potatoes are a powerful resistant starch, but yet half the world thinks potatoes make them fat. Half the world thinks potatoes make them fat. And you look at Europeans who tend to have the best health, the best bodies, they have potatoes at every single meal. Potatoes used to be a staple uh, food in the Indian diet until people got lazier, started overdoing it on the carbs, started overdoing it on the sugar, got diabetes and started blaming the potato. Okay, what about millions of people who are eating potatoes and don't have any problems caused by potatoes? You know, so you see, we all see the way the world the way we want to see it. Okay, now you've got to start seeing it for what the real truth is. Potatoes are not your enemy. White rice is not your enemy. Okay, if it was your enemy, it would be the enemy of thousands and millions of people who are eating it as their staple diet every single day without any health problems that most other people who are depriving themselves of have. So we have a potato, we have cooled, we have rice kanji. I've spoken this about, about this millions of times. It's staple to our country, staple to different parts of our country. You take cooked rice, leftover cooked rice, cool it, put it in a little mud pot or any pot, cover it with water, ferment it overnight, just leave it outside, not in the fridge, and in the morning, consume the water, consume the rice, consume what you want. There are local recipes where people add a little bit of chili, a little bit of onion, mustard seeds. That's up to you. That is brilliant for your gut. I can't tell you the amount of testimonials from the around, around the world that poured in when they started having rice kanji. People's bloating, acidity, everything got better just by doing that and making lifestyle changes. When it comes to nuts, your favorite nuts for your gut would be almonds and pistachios. Of course, unsalted. Then we have yogurt. If you're lactose or lactase intolerant and you cannot get ethically sourced yogurt, which is fabulous for your gut, you can do sakra, you can do kimchi, you can do pickles, which are ethically made without all the heavy refined salt in and all the sugar in. You can do kombucha, you can do uh, kefir, all different probiotics available. You can make it at home, you can buy from a good source, it's up to you. Artificial sweeteners became a trillion dollar industry at one point because they told people it's low in calorie, you lose weight, it's great for diabetics. Yes, and that's what they sold on. Okay, but today we have signs showing us that yes, it may be low in calories, but we also know it causes impaired insulin resistance and it is actually bad for your blood sugar levels. So stop getting fooled with all of these things. There are no shortcuts when it comes to human health. Artificial sweeteners are disastrous for your gut health, period. Disastrous. At the most, you may want to do a little bit of stevia, you may want to balance your sugars, or you may just want to reverse your type 2 diabetes so you can have a normal life because there are millions of people reversing their type 2 diabetes by putting in effort, discipline, and the right lifestyle changes. Moms who are currently pregnant or about to deliver or planning to have kids. If you want better gut health for yourself and your child, plan to breastfeed for a minimum of six months and a maximum of how long you want to do it. Breastfeeding is extremely important for your gut health and your child. Then we have mushrooms, which are a rich source of beta-glucan, excellent for your gut. Included in your foods, oats as well, but not the instant oats. Everyone eating instant oats, please, please 
without disrespect, it's a joke to your body. Okay, you're getting zero benefit of oats because instant oats are stripped of everything. That's why they can cook quickly. They're useless for you. They make you hungry way, way faster. And just because you're adding goji berries to them, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds to them, it's adding a little bit of health, but your oats are useless. You need to get oat groats, which take about 10 minutes to cook, 12 minutes to cook. Pressure cooker, it's even faster. Now that's a rich source of beta glucan, which can really help you with your gut, the kind of fiber that your gut needs and keep you full for a longer time. And now you can add your goji berries and everything else that you want to, to that. Bali as well, you get Bali grains. You can make a pulao out of it. You can boil Bali, add it to your salads. Fantastic for your gut health. And then we have lean protein. If you have poor gut health, even if you're a hardcore non-vegetarian, I would recommend you to cut down on red meat if you have poor gut health. I am not saying it is bad for you, but until inflammation reduces, you move on to more leaner proteins, like maybe a little bit of chicken. Fish is the safest, okay, if you have gut problems. Primarily, if you have a lot of inflammation in the guts, I would suggest that you go on to a plant-based diet for at least two to three weeks to a month until the inflammation comes down, you repair your gut, and then you can slowly start reintroducing animal protein. Now, here's the fun stuff. Dark chocolate, 70% and above. Pure cocoa, pure cacao, great for your gut. So you can enjoy it in the form of a hot chocolate. You can enjoy a piece or two of dark chocolate. Good quality dark chocolate, great for your gut. Green tea, good quality green tea, good quality matcha tea, fantastic for your gut. Onions, garlic, cruciferous vegetables, which include your broccoli, your kale, your cabbage, your cauliflower, your radish, fantastic for your gut. And something that I mention all the time, trifla. Trifla is native to India. You get it in the form of pills or powder. I like to take the powder, mix half a teaspoon with water at night and have it in the morning as well. It is great when you have gut problems, but everyone sees Trifla as a laxative. It is not a laxative. It is something that is fabulous for your gut because it improves your gut. It allows you to pass emotion. So you see everything I just explained to you is stuff that we can do right now at home without the dependence on anything else. So start with the basics of repairing your gut and keeping your gut clean. Now the easiest way to mess up your gut health, self-medicate, overdosing on antibiotics, taking antibiotics without your probiotics, without your B complexes, okay? Um, sleep deprivation affects your gut health. Emotional stress affects your gut health, which is why when you're emotionally stressed, you have massive cravings to feed your bad bacteria with sugar and carbohydrates. When you're emotionally stressed, who craves an apple? Who cra craves a pineapple? No one. We crave sugar, candy, chocolate, carbohydrates, and all of that stuff because it's your bad bacteria that grows more when you are under stress. Sedentary lifestyle, the worst for your stress. Junk food, processed food. Learn to read labels is the worst for your gut. So you see, there's so much that we can automatically do. Just give your body what it needs to maintain the intelligence of your gut and your body looks after you. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.